you tell us how the Peace Project got started? We were in New York doing a teacher training program and spontaneously out of the blue came women from Israel who came to get the training and at the same course uh, Danielle was there from Beirut and halfway through the course it took us a few days into it to get talking and the women from Israel told us that they were teaching Jewish Orthodox people in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem that was very interesting and then uh, Danielle from Beirut told us that she was teaching Orthodox Islamic women in Beirut. And, wow, that's, that's kind of curious. You know, here we are in New York and, and uh, you're teachers in the, in the cultures of Judaism and the culture of, uh, uh, of Lebanon, the Islamic people. And yet they were teaching essentially the same information, but adapted to the cultural language and needs of the people that they were speaking to. So we've kept in touch in recent times and we've been supporting each other's work. And when Israel invaded Lebanon, that was a very interesting time because already these people had met, you see, the students and teachers in Beirut and in Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa. They kept talking to each other and in support of each other. Very poignant, very touching, difficult time where the yoga teachers and students and friends had completely transcended the, the politics of nationalism and the politics of cultural identity. Well, yet not giving up their national or cultural identity either. That's a paradox, you see. You can stay a Muslim and be practicing yoga but free of the need to be aggressively identified, you know, or you can stay a Christian or a Jew or a Buddhist or whatever you are, or an atheist, you know, and be practicing, but not aggressively defining yourself over against one another. We're in the same condition, that's all, no matter what our cultural or national identity is.